and today uh, we'll be talking about an important uh, aspect of corrosion that is called as uh, galvanic corrosion or dissimilar metal corrosion and uh, the topic of the discussion is galvanic or dissimilar metal corrosion. Now, why you should be concerned with the galvanic corrosion? Why we should be worried about the dissimilar metal corrosion. If you look at the engineering components, in many cases, uh, consist of multiple metallurgy, multiple metals. They may use in combination like uh, steel and a stainless steel, or they may apply, as say, a brass, the steel, titanium, maybe with, along with the stainless steels. And uh, there are several reasons for that. For example, if you consider a pipeline carrying water and you want to have a tap where you want to take the water out, and you want to regulate it. We have seen when we talked about the galvanic corrosion that the materials requirement for a given application depending upon how critical it is, how critical the corrosion resistance is. In this case, you take a pipeline if there is a small amount of corrosion, there is a loss in thickness and you are not going to see an apparent leak in the pipeline. But if there is a small amount of corrosion in the, the, in the, in the tap or in the valve, then what happens? The valve or the tap starts leaking you may not able to control this. So while you select a steel for the pipeline, you cannot for obvious reasons choose steel for the tap and valve. Many of you know, you have seen various fittings, right? But they are made up of either stainless steel or made up of brasses. Because stainless steels and brasses, they corrode at a lower rate. And so, the leak is avoided. Now, they bring in similar problems at other places as well. I give an industrial example, okay. You know of this, right? What is this unit called? An heat exchanger, right? If you look at the heat exchanger, the shell, what you see here, is in this case made up of a carbon steel. Actually, it is a this is called an HP heater, high pressure heater in a, in a thermal power plant. The water is heated to high temperatures. And so there is high pressure. So this is made up of carbon steel. But you make the tubes with the stainless steel because the water in the tubes flow at very high rates. And the carbon steel cannot withstand erosion corrosion. So people go for stainless steel. Now the tubes are stainless steels. 
Look at the tube sheets. This is called a tube sheet. Okay. This is called a tube sheet, right? And this is made up of a carbon steel. Similarly, look at the header, for example, this header here, right? Header. This inlet and uh, this outlet here. And this header, header is made up of carbon steels. And these tubes, what you see here, they are impregnated into the into, into the sheet. You can see this here. So these are all tubes which are you know will are welded onto the tube sheet. So you have a combination of carbon steel and a stainless steel being used. I give another illustration. You sometimes weld the structures. It is a stainless steel here. You weld this. The weldment, the weld fusion zone, we call it, could have a different chemical composition as compared to the tube itself. So, there are different chemistry. Basically, you can call this is metal one, this is your weld fusion zone. And the tube, we can call it as another metal. They are coming in contact. Please look at they are coming in electrical contact. They are coming in electrical contact with each other. The one on the top, you see here, slightly a different reason where the corrosion occurred here. This is a, a carbon steel, not carbon steel, it's alloy steel tube. It's a chromoly steel tube used in the boilers, okay. Now, what has happened here was copper deposition in these locations. The copper deposition has happened because the water carried corroded copper metals, corroded copper metal ions. And in fact, that copper ions came some of you might know that when you when you look at the thermal power plant, there is also condenser. You have a steam, the steam goes to steam turbine, it does the work. The steam is getting converted into a water again by a condenser. And condenser in this case was made up of cupronical and copper dissolved, and that copper carried all through and got deposited over here. There are copper metal and this is steel, they led to what is called as galvanic corrosion. There are several reasons, several um, places you see. The other obvious example that can happen is you sometimes coat steel with a nickel. You have seen in car bumpers, you know, you have seen in, in washroom fittings to make it looking very good for aesthetic reasons. If the coating is not proper, then you will see a galvanic corrosion between the nickel coating and the steel substrate. So, whenever you have two different metals coming in contact with each other, when I say contact, I mean the electrical contact with each other then it leads to what is called as the galvanic corrosion. So, two, so two different metals, two dissimilar metals shorted electrically. Can lead to galvanic corrosion. This is the origin. The origin of galvanic corrosion comes like this. You know a very famous device most of us use in a very constructive manner where the galvanic corrosion works and works for the benefit. 
what is that dry cell batteries you know of dry cell battery right in the dry cell battery take a dry cell battery what is it made up of in a few it's made up of a zinc sheet casing right a zinc casing in the center you see graphite of course you will see a cap here right you see a cap generally it is a copper cap the inside you may have something like ammonium chloride and you know and you also have magnesium dioxide how does the current get generated here it is getting generated because it is shorted now okay when these two are shorted when you short when you short these two right when you short the when you short graphite and zinc happens it delivers a current there was a current and and voltage so what is happening to zinc does zinc remain intact how does the current come the current comes because zinc dissolves and gives rise to two electrons the two electrons are used to reduce magnesium dioxide to magnesium oxide so there is a voltage between difference between the zinc and this the zinc and this this uh, graphite electrode but graphite electrode is not an electrochemical system by itself it is magnesium dioxide and magnesium mn uh, mn4 plus and mn2 plus the equilibrium here so between these two the current flows and zinc is rendered as anode and this is rendered as a cathode and and so the corrosion occurs this is a well known example of the so called galvanic corrosion used very constructively but this this happens in industries and that is not going to be good for us you have a carbon steel you have stainless steel if one of these two metals corrode then there is going to be what there is going to be damage to the component so there can be leak uh, there can be you know can happen so so dissimilar metals can lead to the corrosion actually now why why it occurs one we say that there are differing corrosion rates and the differing potentials so if i have two metals you know you take any any environment okay this is m1 and this is m2 i just put environment and then this shot and one is you know so since they have two different potentials you know okay and and so that can lead to these things but even before a shot it's possible that one will have a higher corrosion rate other will have lower corrosion rate but if you look at closely the corrosion rate differences are not the reason no it is not not the major reason one is 
not the major reason. Sometimes it may not be reason at all. The second is the reason. Now, so if you know this galvanic corrosion can occur when you have two different metals, they come in contact with this, then we need to know two things. How do we predict which of the two will undergo corrosion at a higher rate. And if it undergoes at accelerated corrosion due to galvanic you know, interaction, what is the corrosion rate of that? Okay. So, we need to, we need to know in this case, okay. Okay. Can we predict galvanic corrosion. First question, can we calculate, can we calculate galvanic corrosion? So, what is the basis for that? What should the basis for that? So, that we will see. This, the third question that comes is, what are the factors, right? If you know what are the factors, the parameters that control galvanic corrosion, then it is possible for you to methods, you know, to devise methods of controlling corrosion. Control galvanic corrosion. Of course, next is how do we evaluate? at galvanic corrosion. How do you evaluate them? So, let us now um, look into one after another and see that we can have a clarity in all this. So, that uh, you know, if you are doing a research or if you are developing a material, developing a processes or you are developing a monitoring technique for example, it is easy for you to do all this, if you can understand all the five aspects of the galvanic corrosion. Let us take the first one, can we predict corrosion? We all know the galvanic corrosion occurs primarily because of the potential difference. So, potential difference is a reason. We are aware of uh, calculating the equilibrium potentials, right? You guys know about the potentials, which is the thermodynamic property. In the standard state, what do you call that potential? So, the equilibrium is called as standard potentials, okay. So, the one readily available data in the literature is the standard potentials and from the standard potentials you can also calculate the equilibrium potentials provided you are given the, the concentration or activity of the species involved there. For simplicity, if you take the standard potentials and put them in some order, either in the descending order of the standard potentials 
or in the ascending order of the standard potentials. You can list them like this right and for different equilibria and such a list such a series is called as electromotive force series ok. This is called as electro motive force is not it potentially is a force a driving force for the reaction to occur ok. This is called as electromotive force. You can have uh, you know list I mean you can have hundreds of equilibrium not necessarily the equilibrium related to metal and metal ions you can have between the uh, you know zone species you know you, you, for example there are some organic molecules there are even there are inorganic molecules Fe2 plus Fe3 plus in equilibrium can happen not necessarily metal is involved there. So, you can have a an exhaustive list, but for us if you can look at you know the metals which are somewhat related to engineering applications just have a look at them it is very somewhat interesting. Look at some of them for example, uh, let us say let us take the system like gold and the uh, gold and look at the, the standard potential of that it has got they are olds right. When you say standard potential it is implicit it is in relation to the standard hydrogen electrode. So, I do not really have to make mention about it but all of the cases you should make a mention in whose uh, reference the potential is measured. You can also have so just given few uh, examples here ok and you can also get it from the lots of published literature ok. So, this gives you a driving force now, uh, the electrode potential uh, the standard electrode potential is given in the decreasing order from the highest we have here is the gold and here lowest is uh, is the magnesium here ok. And somewhere you see here the hydrogen and uh, you know how to interpret this data right. Suppose, any metal that is lying you know below this hydrogen you uh, immerse it in the acid solution of uh, standard state and the ions are standard state then hydrogen is going to evolve and all this above this metal you will not get hydrogen evolution taking place. So, corrosion will not take place. So, you normally call this as as noble right and you call this as active generally that is how you talk about it. And the nobility increases as you move from the top to the bottom. And um, you can compare any two, the, the, the one just lies above is noble and the one below is considered as relatively active and relatively noble ok. So, when we talk about all this we talk about the relative values not the absolute values right. If you take let us say gold in gold chloride and platinum and platinum chloride you just couple them together the platinum will be acting as an anode and gold will act as a cathode. So, you can predict which of this will undergo corrosion what is the basis normally we use the basis earlier called as E cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode it has to be positive. 
right? You recollect our discussion earlier, right? Okay. So it is possible to use uh, you know this uh, EMF series and 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 find out which of these metals which are shorted electrically can become anode and become a cathode ok based on the equilibrium potentials ok. But can this be true? Can this happen in the real life situations? In the real life situation do you have a an equilibrium potential or you know standard potentials in the state where the metal is corroding? Say steel is immersed in water, zinc is immersed in water. It will establish a potential, right? What is that potential called? When zinc Im immersed in, in water and it is what is the what is the potential called? That is simply called as a corrosion potential. So, it is it is going to establish a potential which is called as a corrosion potential, but what is the what is the criteria for the metal to establish corrosion potential? How does that value is arrived there? How does the metal arrives at value? What is the basis for that? No? When you when you take a steel, I mean you just take a, a iron and put it in acid, and after some time it will attain a potential which is steady state, slowly it becomes steady state. And you measure the potential, and that is called corrosion potential. Why does the metal reach that particular potential? Yeah? Yeah, see that is the criteria for that. It has to satisfy the mixed potential theory. The rate of anodic reaction must be equal to rate of cathodic reaction. That is the place where the metal will stabilize and the corrosion potential will stabilize. All other cases, the potential will drift, it will drift towards that actually. That is the criteria for that, ok. So, in actual real life situations, the EMF series or the equilibrium potentials, they have very less relevance to predict the galvanic corrosion. So, what is the potential that is relevant actually? So, we look at what is called as corrosion potentials. is relevant and equilibrium potential is is irrelevant. What drives them? What drives the current between let us say zinc and and um, and iron immersed in any environment you know maybe water maybe in acid what drives actually? What potential is that? It is the corrosion potential that drives the current between these two metals. Now, when you take corrosion potential there is a problem. What is the problem? The corrosion potential is, is it unique to unique to a metal actually? I take steel. Do you think the corrosion potential of steel will be same in, in all corrosive medium? Yeah? No. So, the corrosion potential of the metal will very much depend upon the environment, the temperature, the pressure, the concentration of the species, nature of the species, pH, there are so many variations that you will get and you probably must have a, a million of million data of e car values to compare. So, that is simply not possible in practice. So, they developed a potential based on metals. In alloys in in pure seawater. 
you can pure sea water also questionable right the composition of sea water in arabian sea may be we have bengal may be different okay it was measured in us at ann arbor okay it's deep in the sea so that the pollutants and all are not going to influence the corrosion potentials again i don't know how many of you know even in a given environment the corrosion potential is not going to be unique like you see in the case of equilibrium potentials it can vary by few millivolts 5 millivolts 10 millivolts can really change the way you prepare the sample sometimes you prepare a very nice smooth samples sometimes mirror finish so you are not going to have a unique e core value even a given environment even for a given metal and alloy so you can only look at the relative performance relative values of the corrosion potentials that is why if you see the pattern of books and many times they give you a relative positions and not the red values you also see the asm handbook the corrosion values are given as a band of values you're not going to get the unique values why it is kinetics okay because of kinetics you're not going to have unique e core value and so there is going to be a brand of value you are going to have it so what i have done is the pure sea water and they list the corrosion potentials of that and that is called as galvanic series i can just uh, give some illustrations here okay and um, and if you see in, in the in the published literature you see lots of data but let's give some important uh, you know uh, metals and alloys platinum tops here then you get the gold then you get the graphite titanium okay you have silver okay you have uh, say uh, 188 small stainless steel passive and uh, nickel passive cooper nickel okay you have you have um, copper zinc and you have tin stainless steels which are active cast iron steel okay aluminum alloys okay have zinc yeah, before that i think you will get uh, cadmium your aluminum have zinc magnesium we are just moving from here like that so you see some interesting behavior in the um in the uh, the metals and alloys uh, in galvanic series we saw this the emf series there are some of them very obvious you can see that okay i hope you will you could able to recollect some of them okay i just put back here you can have a look at this galvanic series i'm sorry um the emf series you see how they are looking like this here okay and titanium comes somewhere here huh? titanium comes titanium will come in fact the titanium will come um, uh even somewhere here actually okay titanium will come even below magnesium 
isn't it? How do you extract titanium? You use magnesium to extract titanium actually, the Crohn's process, okay. Yeah. So, titanium come even below actually, one of the most reactive material is, is uh, titanium. Compare this, compare this and what are the obvious differences do you, do you see? Right. What are the obvious differences you see in this? No, no differences? Yeah, what do you see? Yeah? Yeah, the first obvious difference you find is in the EMF series, you do not see any alloys, you see only pure metals, right. In the galvanic series, you do see uh, alloys and metals, that is one major difference. What is the other difference? Of course, it is the sea water, ok. Of course, there is that is of course, the standard state or so it has to be its own ions, ok. That is of course, there is another implicit difference that you have. Anything more you see? Yes. Yeah, we see you know some of them which are reactive in the electromotive series. As I said, titanium will be figuring somewhere here, ok. The titanium is going go up. Even between platinum and gold, the platinum acts relatively noble as compared to the gold actually. See, there is a reversal taking place. And even more important is, the stainless steel exhibits the galvanic potentials at two locations, the passive state and the active state. You know what the passive state is, you know what act, active state is, right. So, metal when it is passive, the potential is noble, when it is active, the potential is relatively more negative potentials, active potentials. You know the reason why it is, right. Why does it happen? When the metal spontaneously pass away, it, what happens to the car? Does it go up or come down? What happens? Anybody can recollect that? It goes up, right? If you, if you, if you look at the active, passive, transpassive polarization curve, you best recollect that. The car they will lie at a very, you know, close to equilibrium potential if if the alloy is not spontaneously passivating. If it is passivating, the potential will, will shift up. So, obviously, that potential is noble compared to the metal exhibiting active potentials. So, stainless steel itself can form galvanic corrosion between themselves, the active state, the passive state. You will see later that, you know, in a, in a pit for example, it will act as a anode surrounding the pit, you will act as a cathode. We will see that later, ok. I hope you are getting this point, right. So, you please do understand this. If you do not understand this, you cannot predict galvanic corrosion in reality where it happens in the field, ok. I hope you are able to see the differences uh, very clearly between these things, ok. So, um, practically, we use the galvanic potentials. Ideally, if I am choosing an alloy, somebody, somebody comes to you, ok, and they ask you to select two different materials for application. What data do you seek? I need to use steel and stainless steel or maybe somebody says, oh, I want to use titanium and I want to use stainless steel, I need to do together, you know. So, what data do you seek from that? You say that, oh, you say that, what do you do? 
Yeah, so what is the environment you're looking at, you know? And that put and that environment you should get the corrosion potential. That is what the right thing to do that. But if you don't have that data, now I have two tables. I have a table one which is a galvanic series, and the table um, two, which is a EMF series, they are available readily for you. Which one do you use? I use galvanic series because galvanic series is more reliable than the EMF series. But do understand that there is no galvanic series which is applicable all through any environment. I, I give an example. Suppose in the rooftop, you know, you are going to use, uh, uh, you know, two different metals. The galvanic series for that atmospheric corrosion is different from the galvanic series that you find in seawater because some of them may pass away, something can happen. Okay, so it is, it is, it is important that you keep in mind that the galvanic series, what you will see here is seawater that should be used very cautiously only when you do not have the data corresponding to given application. Otherwise, you need to generate the data and that data can only be employed in selecting the materials, material selection. Now, let us take the case of the galvanic corrosion. What are the factors that affect the galvanic corrosion? We saw the potentials, right? Now, what is that that governs the galvanic corrosion of the metals? Let us take two distinct examples, uh, a simple one and a complicated one, so that you can understand the electrochemical parameters that affect the galvanic corrosion rate of a metal. We have seen that when the galvanic potentials are different, the one with the noble potential will act as a cathode, the one with the active potential will act as an anode, that you know that, but you do not know what rate at which the active metal will undergo corrosion. So, how do you electrochemically understand that? So, let us use the, the so called the events diagrams to understand this. Okay? Let us take uh, the case of say iron and say platinum in let us say 1 molar hydrochloric acid. How do I get this? Can you do? Now, I think you guys have mastered the kinetics and we discussed this for about 10, 10 hours of lectures we discussed, right? How do you do this? Anybody has a clue? You go apply mixed potential theory, right? So, first of all, you apply mixed potential theory for platinum separately. Mixed potential theory for steels, I mean iron separately. You get the E car and I car for iron and platinum in that water without coupling them galvanically. You know the corrosion rate. You put them together now. Now you rearrange all of them actually. Again, mixed potential theory is applied. What do you do? What do you say? The total anodic reaction is equal to total cathodic reaction in the overall system. Okay, you solve that equation, then you will get oh, which undergoes what or what rate it is happening at all taking place. So, simple galvanic theory, okay, uh, it can be evolved by applying the events diagrams. Okay, suppose I take platinum, let us take platinum. I just take platinum here and I, you know the case of let us say um, take 
the platinum here in one case. Now, what happens? Go for standard states huh? for the for simplicity, let us go standard state. What is the equilibrium potential of platinum? Is 1.2. What is this platinum? 2 plus plus 2 electron gives you platinum. Am I right? And what about um, the other equilibrium? So, what happens in this case? Will platinum corrode? Does platinum corrode? Platinum does not corrode at all. So, practically we do not use the dissolution or the platinum equilibrium when you talk about iron, right? Because you see here now when you put platinum and you in, in, a, in, a, in an acid and you shroud it with, with hydrogen you will always have the hydrogen gas dissociating into H plus and platinum will not dissolve, ok. So, we do not normally use this, if you see in the pattern of book, you do not see that this is there at all, ok. And for iron, it is easier, right. What is this cathodic reaction here? This is your exchange current density for what? Adenon? Iron. Please understand that. Okay. So, this is your cathodic reaction. H plus plus electron gives you like this. So, iron when iron corrodes, you have iron evolution taking place. Now, let us put this together and see how the galvanic reaction occur between platinum and these things, right. So, this is uh, platinum separately immersed in the acid, iron immersed in the acid separately. Now, if I am going to be together, what happens now? Let us look at this. This is iron and platinum shorted is iron separate, platinum separate, ok. What are the equilibria you would have to be considered? There are only two equilibria to be considered. One is H plus is in equilibrium with hydrogen, iron is in equilibrium with Fe2, Fe2 plus. Am I right or not? Platinum 2 plus platinum does not come into picture at all. Will it come? Does not come into picture, right? So, let us take the case of iron here. Let us take the case of iron. Right? This is your Fe2 Fe going as Fe2 plus plus 2 electrons. Now, what is this called? Exchange condensity for H plus and H on iron. Please look at that, ok. And this, if you want to put iron here, you can draw this diagram for iron. This is this is your exchange condensity for Fe2 plus Fu and this is your E car, I car.
Now I want to represent now. This is clear, right? This is I'm, same thing I've written here only. Now I want to now represent platinum in the solution. How to represent now? What will happen on the platinum surface? You put it in acid, you have hydrogen. What equilibrium will be there in the surface of platinum? H plus S, right? So, what is the how do you represent here? What will be the potential there? Will the potential of, of H plus H on platinum and iron will be different or same? The equilibrium potential for H plus H on iron and platinum will it be same or different? Yeah? <laughs> Why will it be different? How do you, how do you find out the equilibrium potential for H plus H? Yeah, come on. Quick, how do you find out the equilibrium potential? Can you find out or not? How do you find out? So, it is, it is nurse equation there, isn't it? Where does it come into picture? Where is platinum or iron? The equilibrium potential does not depend upon iron or nickel, whatever. It is talks about the partial pressure of hydrogen and the concentration of S plus ions. That is not going to change. So, the equilibrium potential of that will remain the same, not going to change. This is the equilibrium potential of H plus and H, right? But what is going to change on platinum? Yeah? Come on, I want to see people talk. You guys know. Come on, what, what, what is going to happen? Can you look at your, your handout? Anybody has the handout now? What is the exchange current density approximately for um, for H plus H and platinum? 10 power? Minus, minus 3 what? Amperes? Centimeter square. For iron, how much? Minus, minus 6? Okay. So, it is about 3 orders of magnitude higher for that. So, the exchange current density for that is going to come, come somewhere here. Am I right? The Taffel slope remains the same. So, I write the Taffel slope here. This is the exchange current density I naught H plus H on platinum. Agreed or not agreed? So, this is on platinum. Now, what is mixed potential theory? You sum up all the cathodic reactions and sum up all the I know reaction, am I right or not? So, sum of this, when you sum up, this becomes so small. This is going to be your place where the mixed potential theory is applicable. And this is going to be this what? This is your I card of what? Of iron combined with platinum here. What happened to this one? This is my equilibrium potential. Sorry, this is your E card of iron and when you shot with platinum. Agreed? Okay. Agreed or not agreed? Okay. Now, if you agreed on it, now I am going to ask a question now to you. Let us make the observations here now. We'll make, let us look at the observations. Okay. They are an acid. Let us say 1 molar SCL. Please notice they are not shorted now, just put it here. If you can closely observe the surface of iron, the surface of platinum, what do you what will you see there? Will you be able to see anything or not? Yeah, there will be bubble what bubble? What what bubbles will be? Where will there be bubble? Platinum? Where there will be bubble? An iron, right? If iron, there will be gas bubbles. What do you have? What will be the gas? The gas will be hydrogen gas. 
I think you should have given simply one answer, hydrogen gas. That talks about, you know, people are clear about, you know. Okay. So, you have a hydrogen evolution taking place on, the, on, on, on this. Will there be hydrogen evolution on platinum? No, because platinum cannot get oxidized. Okay. So, there will be hydrogen evolution taking place. Now, what happens? I am going to take it out and I am going to short this. You observe now what happens. Where where will the hydrogen evolve? Platinum, right? Now the hydrogen will not evolve, there will be less hydrogen evolution on, on iron, then more hydrogen evolve on the platinum. Right? So the hydrogen evolution will start shifting from here to this. What happens? So there will be more hydrogen evolution on iron upon the on the platinum, the amount of hydrogen evolution on iron is less, but then the amount of hydrogen evolution on iron and platinum put together will be equal to the amount of iron corroding on iron surface. Can I, can I say that actually? Am I making sense? The amount of hydrogen and evolved on platinum and iron, if you look at it, okay, iron, you take this quantified, which, which, which will be equal to the amount of iron that is getting corroded on the iron surfaces. That is how the mixed person theory is. What is mixed person theory? The total amount of reduction is equal to the total amount of oxidation takes place. Now, in this case, if I measure the potential here using a voltmeter, what will happen to potential of when you shorten this, the potential of this, this will be same only, am I right? Assuming that the conductivity is very, very, very high conductivity here. When I put them this together, the potential will change. Now, what will happen to the potential of this system when you short it? When I do not short it, the platinum will exhibit a potential is equal to what potential? Equal to hydrogen equilibrium. Whereas iron will exhibit a potential equal to corrosion potential, right? Now, when you short this, what will happen to the potential of these two? Go up, please look at your diagram only, okay? What will happen to these potentials? Huh? It will increase, right? The potential starts moving from here to this. I want you to look at the diagram. If, if you do not look at the diagram, analyze it, you cannot, you cannot guess it. I think what you guess it, you have finished. You have to look at the diagram. See, what happens here is, is the potential start moving from here to this. That is what happens, means potential. Okay, it moves up here. Okay. The potential moves from here to this because this is a mixed potential theory. See now, because moves from here to this. The hydrogen evolution on iron, what happens now? Look at this, the hydrogen evolution on iron is now decreasing. The amount of hydrogen evolution on platinum is more because now it is moved from this potential, it is moved to this potential. So, the hydrogen evolution on platinum is increasing because at when you, when you just immerse platinum in the solution, this is the potential you are going to have it. On shorting, the potential moves from here to this, but for iron, the potential moves from here to this. So, that means the hydrogen evolution on iron is decreasing the hydrogen evolution on platinum is increasing from here to this. So, that is what will happen. I hope, I think there will be an, an experiment in the, in the lab. I, say, I do not know how many of you have already done it. If you have not done it, you please do observe this, this particular test. I want you to observe it and see does it really happen or not happen at all. Okay? So, this is something you should be looking at actually. Okay? You, you clear about, yeah? Yeah. First means you are talking about this, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you know that platinum does not corrode. Yes, it does not corrode. Uh, by, by this uh, curves, this Which is, yeah, it is, yeah, it is interesting at this point. That is right. That's right. Yeah. How we explain like this particular So, how do you explain this now? Suppose I take a platinum, right? I immerse, dip it in a sulfuric acid and I shroud the sulfuric, uh, sulfuric acid completely with hydrogen, let us say one atmospheric hydrogen. So, what do you think will happen there? What, what do you think will happen? What you can happen is, of course, you will establish an equilibrium actually, okay? You will establish an equilibrium. Will, the, will, okay, will, this, will this go to this one? It may not go here also. In fact, this, this will not go here, okay. 
Suppose, assume that this guy is getting oxidized. Suppose he's getting oxidized, right? The atmosphere reducing species to take. If I have platinum ions in the solution, what will happen to platinum ions? The platinum ions will get reduced. So, you, you visualize other situation. I have platinum in the solution as platinum 2 plus and I have one more uh, hydrochloric acid and I am also putting hydrogen in the system. I keep putting hydrogen in the system. What will happen now? Slowly platinum ions will get deposited as platinum metal will happen. Okay. If on the other hand, there is no platinum ions in the solution, what will happen? Nothing will happen. The potential will remain here only. Because if iron dissociates as, to, as electron, there must be some species to take electrons at all, right? There is no species to take electrons at all, okay? That means nothing will happen there. That is why platinum is considered as a reference electrode in this case. What is the platinum actually? Platinum immersed in acid and shrouded with hydrogen. What is the equilibrium there? The equilibrium is between H plus and H. There is no oxidation, no reduction take place. It goes both ways, right? That is why platinum in acid is considered as a reference electrode where there is no net oxidation, no net reduction taking place. If you add some platinum ions, obviously all the platinum ions will slowly get reduced to platinum at all actually. So, question now you write, you will not go here, it will remain here only, okay. But, but then the moment I am going to put platinum chloride, this line is applicable, is not it? If I put a platinum chloride, what is this one actually? That is why I put here platinum 2 plus plus 2 electron gives you platinum. That means the guy has got platinum ions here. There is no platinum ion, this guy will not even come at all actually here, okay. Yeah, you are right. If you are going to use, if you are going to read this title, ion platinum in, in, in NMSCL, probably this fellow does not even figure here, okay. From that point of view, it's correct. I just drawn this only to Ill illustrate to you how the equilibrium will start shifting. If you don't have platinum ions, there will be no way you will get the hydrogen dissociation as H plus. Okay, it will dissociate again. Re uh, will, will 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 reduce. There will be equilibrium established in between platinum uh, between the H plus and uh, and uh, and uh, H on the platinum surface. That becomes your reference electrode. Okay, that's what happens at all actually. Yes. Uh, platinum line represents the, uh, according to the mixed potential theory, the final outcome, right? The, 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 yeah, what does this dotted line correspond to? Yes, yeah, good. What does this dotted line, uh, what, is, what is this dotted line means? The, the sum of this, the hydrogen reduction reaction for this, iron reduction, this iron reduction reaction occurs in the ion surface given by this kinetics. Hydrogen reduction reaction occurs in the platinum surface followed by this solid, solid lines. So, what does it mean? If I hold, if I hold iron at that particular potential, the amount of hydrogen on iron is only this much, but on platinum, it will be this much. But if I have both platinum and iron together, the total will be this much. Is not it? You just, I know, assume that I have a platinum and platinum, platinum and, and iron together, I short it and apply a common voltage. What will be the amount of hydrogen will take place? This is on the iron, uh, this is on the platinum, the total will be. So, for that particular potential, that is the amount of thing that happens. Instead of platinum, I am going to put gold, you look at the gold, what is the value of gold actually there? Exchange current density is given, not given there? 10 to minus 6, right? So, 10 to minus 6 is coming very close to this, right? 10 to minus 6, probably you will not get a huge difference in the hydrogen evolution reaction if it is a gold, okay. So, the line will shift towards this. So, the effect, in fact, we will see later the effect of galvanic interaction of gold and steel will be low as compared to the galvanic interaction between platinum and steel, okay, because the exchange current density on gold is lower for hydrogen equilibria as compared to that of platinum, okay. So, so that is what we are now looking at what the kinetic parameters, what are the kinetic parameters that are going to affect this now. Now, before we close, I want to 
look at this here look at what are the okay and look at this this is the 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 the, the anodic tapered slope of of the active metal and the cathodic tapered slope of the other one is okay is okay i think we will we'll talk about this when we when you deal with uh, two active metals here it's noble metal here it is an active metal so we will see what happens when you have two active metals how they will change okay and i think today uh, i mean we can stop here uh, provided you have any questions for for clarification magnitude of order for the hydrogen evolution of platinum is that much that uh, in general, we see that iron on iron there will be no hydrogen evolution when there will be a terminal of uh, virtually no hydrogen, virtually but you can't say no hydrogen, no hydro virtually no hydrogen, like virtually no hydrogen. Will it suppress that much the uh, that much that it suppresses all the hydrogen evolution? Yeah, that is because of that. It is again we go back to same thing. The events diagram only talks about the relation between the potential and the current. You have a platinum here, that is all. But what is the role of platinum? The role of platinum is to lift the potential from here to this. Otherwise, the platinum is not talking to the steel at all, anyway, right. Because it is lifting the potential here, it is happening. Otherwise, any other metal will lift to that way, well, it will happen. So, it is again the same Tafel equation is valid. You move from here to here, you apply the Tafel equation, you will still get the value, ok. So, it is platinum or something else, something else does not matter at all because as long as you, you know, you follow the same Tafel line, this is a Tafel line at all, ok. If, if, on the other hand, you move down, the iron evolution on iron will increase, right, ok. So, that we will see later. When will you move down? That we will see actually. That could happen if you are going to take about a more active metal than iron things will be different. We will talk about it in the next class.